stabilization to the colors. Welcome to this plan commission meeting for Tuesday, November 19. Um, if you have not been here before, you need to know a few rules. First, turn off your cell phones or turn them to vibrate, please, which I just did. Um, secondly, uh, staff will introduce the item with a staff report and then the plan commission will ask technical questions and then we will turn it over to the audience for audience comments. When you do give a comment, come to the podium, give your name and address and then state your views. And after we've heard from the public, we will uh, turn it back to the plan commission. The plan commission will discuss and vote and go on to the next item. So with that, we'll call the roll. Thomas Voitek. Kathleen Prop. Here. Mamadou Kulabali. Here. Lindsay Erickson. Here. Michael Ford. John Hintz. Present. John Kiefer. Lori Palmieri. Thomas Perry. Here. Justin Mitchell. Here. Derek Groth. Uh, you have the November 5th minutes. What's your pleasure? Move to approve. Second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. First item, extraterritorial two-lot land division certified survey map at the North 3400 block of Black Wolf Avenue in the town of Nakaimai. And were there any um, site inspections? Okay, there were none. Uh, we will accept the staff report as part of the record. Thank you. This is a two-lot land division request in the town of Black Wolf. Uh, the subject site is approximately a quarter mile, whoop, quarter mile east of Interstate 41 and about 1.25 miles south of the Oshkosh city limits. Up on the screen is a, an aerial photo of, uh, from 2015 showing the subject site. Uh, currently the site is zoned, it has a Winnebago County zoning of A1, which is an agribusiness district as well as the surrounding areas to the southeast and west and then to the north has a general farming or a2 uh, zone district that's uh, regulated by winnebago county the pro pro uh, proposed division is uh, taking the base 60 or i'm sorry the 40 acre parcel and slicing off an acre parcel which is lot two right here and this uh, certified survey map also will officially dedicate right away on the north side of Black Wolf Avenue, the north 33 feet will be officially dedicated. Uh, both proposed lots meet or exceed Winnebago County's minimum lot size requirements in regard to width, depth, and area. Uh, both lots will have direct access to Black Wolf Avenue. Um, and currently the subject site is uh, for the most part used ex exclusively for agricultural purposes the city's comprehensive plan designates this area for rural preserve or rural residential and those areas are generally uh, defined um, allowing maximum densities of 35 acres but used primarily for agricultural purposes uh, staff is of the opinion that the proposed land division is consistent with the uh, comp plans recommendation uh, the purpose of the land division is to allow construction of a single family home on the 10 acre parcel. Uh, the current al allowable uses are dictated by the underlying zoning district, which is regulated by Winnebago County. Any proposed zone change would have to be consistent with the city's comprehensive plan. Uh, while researching this uh, report, I discovered that the property does fall within the county's agriculture. Um, agricultural district and the property is enrolled with the county's farmland preservation program let's see here's a map of the, uh, the county's farm are the participating lands within the county's farmland preservation program I did check with the county and this land division is cons consistent with their uh, farmland pre uh, pres uh, preservation program requirements the uh, per state statute um, the, la uh, the lot being created meets the 1 to 20 ratio of the base farm tract um, which is 226 acres so in theory the maximum uh, allowable acreage that can be sliced off and used for non-agricultural non purposes would be 11.31 acres and the proposed lot is 
just a, just shy of 10 acres in size, so it does meet that criteria, as well as the proposed land use, which is a conditional use within a farmland preservation area. So any uh, approvals for the proposed single family home would have to go through the county for final approvals. The Department of Public Works reviewed the uh, land division and commented there may be wetlands located on a property, most notably along uh, in, where's my cursor? Interminence, there's an intermittent stream that runs along the property here, and there could be wetlands in here, so a wetland delineation may be required prior to any development as determined by Winnebago County. So that staff is supportive of this two-lot land, two land division as requested. Okay, technical questions, Land Commission? Um, Justin? Um, do you know what it entails to be a participant in the um, farmland, farmland preservation program? It, are there I incentives? I don't know what the incentive is or anything. Okay. Anybody else, technical questions? Is anyone here from the audience to speak on this item? Anyone from the audience to speak on this item? Is the, is the landowner not here? Well, seeing none, um, back to the commission, and there is no applicant to give a statement. Motion to adopt the findings and recommendations as stated in the staff report. Second. Uh, but discussion? Okay, call the roll. All right. Kulavali? Yeah. Erickson? Aye. Hintz? Aye. Kiefer? Aye. Perry? <coughs> Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Prop. Hi. Motion carried 7 0. <coughs> okay, the next item is a public hearing conditional use permit request for an outdoor storage use at 36 East 10th Avenue, Sadoff Iron and Metal Company. And uh, were there any site inspections? I had one. Okay, the chair will accept the staff report as part of the record, and now we'll hear the staff report. Thank you. So this is the uh, Sadoff Iron Site. It is located on the east side of South Main Street with uh, frontage along uh, East 9th Avenue and East 10th Avenue and does have vacated right of way uh, running through the property. Um, the surrounding land uses include a mixture of commercial and industrial uses um, along with um, some vacant land to the north and to the east. So here is uh, the subject site, and uh, Vinton Construction is proposing to use the subject site uh, for recycling of construction materials such as concrete and asphalt. Uh, the raw materials will be stockpiled and processed into base coarse uh, materials to be used for construction processes. Um, so they currently have these materials to the north across East 9th Avenue, so they will be moving them to the subject site. Um, staff is supportive of <coughs> the conditional use permit. Um, on a temporary basis, um, I'm proposing a maximum time of uh, two years to, for these items to be stored there. Um, we're also proposing that um, a condition that the area be screened with uh, eight foot tall solid fencing, and that's also a code requirement. We're also proposing a condition that the site be watered uh, during uh, crushing processes um, to mitigate any concerns related to dust. Uh, Public Works reviewed the proposal and they noted that there is a water main running through the site. Um, so they are recommending a condition that uh, fencing be, be put up uh, 10 feet on either side of that water main um, to keep the materials out of that area um, so that if they do need to access the water main, um, nothing is obstructing it. And staff is supportive of the conditional use permit request um, with the following conditions. Uh, all materials being stored on site must be removed from the site within two years. The storage area must be enclosed with eight foot, uh, minimum eight foot tall solid fencing. The site must be watered during crushing operations to mitigate dust. Uh, East 9th Avenue must be watered during crushing operations to mitigate dust. Debris must be removed from East 9th Avenue public right of way. East 9th Avenue must be maintained and any damages must be repaired by the applicant and nothing may be stored within 10 feet of the storm sewer and water main with a minimum four foot tall chain link fence uh, installed 10 feet from the water main on both sides to prevent materials from encroaching into the 20 foot wide area. Okay. Um, technical questions. John. 
Um, yeah, I I know that this is in harmony with the uh, comprehensive plan and whatnot. I was just curious about how about with the, uh, the the relatively newly formed Sawdust District that's in that area. I mean, what are we looking at going forward? That's why we uh, put a two-year clause in there. We know the applicant has an immediate need uh, with some of the additional construction projects that are going on. We feel that within two years, as the district starts to evolve and start to redevelop, that will be taken care of. Okay. Thank you. I was just wondering uh, about the rationale behind the term. So this is because of the future plan? It's because of the long-range plan for the saw structure is a redevelopment area. And they said, we know the applicants are in the area. They'd like to stay in the area as they finish up some of the work that they have going on and then long-term find a, a permanent site for them. Any other technical questions? I have one. Um, I'm confused. This land is owned by Sadov and Rudoy. But it's Vinton Construction that is storing piles of dirt material, rubble. which is rubble, which is basically the same stuff that they're storing north. Correct. Of the ninth. The, the property to the north is owned by the city, and the city is looking to have that removed from their property as redevelopment and RFP goes out for redevelopment of that site. Oh, okay. Well, because I've looked at that many times as I'm driving past, thinking that is so bad. It's horrible. <laughs> um, you know, and it's a big, tall mound if it were a small, underprepossessing mound. That but gets back to, again, the, the two year kind of requirement that we've placed on it saying we understand the immediate need, but in the future, okay. as this redevelops, it's not something we want there long term. Okay, so uh, they will be leasing or whatever from Sadoff Rudai who owns the property. Yeah, I, I don't know the specifics of the requirement, okay. but that's my understanding. Okay, so because it's already there and because we evidently thought it was okay at one point <laughs> to store rubble and piles of stuff there, we're going to be moving it. If we accept this, we'll be moving it temporarily. Correct. Okay. And so the current ugly fence, well, <coughs> fence in disrepair, will come down and uh, around Sadoff. Around Sadoff. Yeah, part of the around the construction material. Correct. Site. Part of the requirements for outdoor storage of any nature, as you guys have seen this on a lot of the outdoor storage requests, is the code requires eight foot solid fencing around outdoor yeah. storage operations. Um, the CUP is for outdoor <coughs> storage, so we'd have to meet that eight foot solid fencing requirement. Okay. And the current fencing is with the slats is not considered solid, right? We do allow us, there's certain types of sliding that an applicant can use to achieve a solid fence. We've seen with some of like the Oshkosh Corp, where they do like the interwoven, interwoven fencing, yeah. Fencing. Okay. But right, at least 90% nine, percent opacity. Yeah, we have a 90% opacity. But in theory. Solid. And yeah. if there is if there is an applicant <coughs> here, um, in theory, the fence, current fence, will be replaced. It will, they will need to at minimum add the required fencing. Okay. I don't want to speak for that if they're going to remove okay. the other fence that's out there or not, but it will have to be fenced to meet the minimum requirements of the zoning ordinance, which is the eight foot solid. Okay. Any other technical questions? All right, I'll open the public hearing and um, request a statement from the applicant if the applicant is. My name is Bill Vachon, 3920 Jenkel Terrace, Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'm environmental scientist for Vinton Construction. And this is, as you mentioned, this is a, a short-term storage. We are currently looking for a long-term uh, crushing location for our, our construction activities here in the city. So the city's asking us to vacate the current location. So we're looking to move this material, hopefully by the end of the spring next year, uh, that material will be gone and we'll have a new site, a uh, permanent site. So you're talking two years, I think it'll be less than two years. Um, there's an awful lot of stuff on your current site now. Will that be, will that go out and more come in or will that just all get moved? That'll all get moved. We are done with the 2019 season and there is a large portion of material that is currently the city's, the pile in the middle. Okay. Um, on the west end, that is our material, so that would be the material that would be re relocated. Okay, and then the city should 
move its own material? I think they're looking with the demo project just to the north. I think they're looking to use that as some backfill material. Yeah, my understanding is um, the city's acquired some of the properties to north of this location. Okay. A lot of those buildings will be coming down and there will be a need for fill um, as those demolition processes take place. A lot of the storage material that is city owned on that lot will be used in the demolition excuse, for fill after the demolition of those buildings. If Kelly and Alan can, okay, they're agreeing with what I said. <coughs> okay. Um, anybody have questions for the applicant? Are you okay with that the fence over the water main? The, the four foot chain link, I'd actually prefer if you'd uh, refer to that as uh, jersey barriers, four foot with a jersey barrier. Uh, chain link fence will not hold material if a backhoe or end loader is, is scooping it. They will push right through that chain link fence. But if there was a jersey barrier, that would prevent that. I'm looking at Justin. He's not in his head, so that's we we will. We would, would we would prefer that than a chain link fence. We can amend that that condition to to follow that. Chain link doesn't stand a chance to a front end loader. How long has um debris been stored at that area approximately Joe, do you re recall six to eight years six to eight years yes, sir um, during that time how many times or ha has any sort of like um, environmental review or water uh, quality contamination assessment been done to my knowledge that there hasn't been any environmental releases on the property during Vinton Construction's tenor on the property that would requ require such an environmental audit or investigation. Sure, you're not developing a building or anything, but right. in, if, if we, is there any sort of uh, assessment that's ever been done as to in, if, in fact, I mean, this is relatively close to the lake, um, where it, it's it's having any sort of uh, potential pollution or, or um, uh, you know, water quality impact. From the aggregate that's brought on and crushed? Well, asphalt, I mean, uh, that has uh, potential contaminants and, and concrete can as well. And I don't know what else they're storing, but. Typical aggregate construction materials are pretty, um, pretty neutral as far as contaminants that would be concerning to impacts the groundwater or surface water. Uh, the biggest issue would be dust, and that's more of a nuisance complaint during crushing and therefore the requirement or watering all our crushing operations are set up that they do have water during the crushing. And if there's uh, issues with dust on the haul roads, water is applied. But as far as any kind of environmental impact, uh, if we'd have, let's say, a, a tr transmission oil pan go on a truck, uh, I would be doing an environmental audit. We'd be doing a cleanup. But that has not occurred since we've been in the yard. Anybody else questions for the applicant? I guess not. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else here to speak to the public hearing about this site? Come forward, please. Bob Ranke from Ranke Monuments at 900 South Main Street. I have been involved in the dirt end of the deal because unfortunately Bitten has done their best but they don't do anything as far as killing the dust, sweeping the roads, maintaining the road. The road has yet to been patched in all the years that they've used it over there. I have complained repeated times and all it is is it's blamed to different people. They're subcontractors. It's that guy's fault. It's this guy's fault. If you're going to move the stuff and they're going to use it temporarily, why don't they use the 10th Street entrance to Sadoff's property? That street's concrete. It was built for the heavy trucks and avoid, avoid the dust. I chew dust the entire summer through my buildings, my vehicles. I can wash them daily. And I've called up here to Darlene Brandt. She has done her best to talk to the folks at Vinton. They have talked to the subcontractors because supposedly it's the subcontractors problem to water the road and sweep the road and it falls on deaf ears. So I understand the progress, but I also understand they have not taken the steps to what you're asking for them to do. It won't happen this year either unless they vacate the proper property totally. Okay. Um, questions? Yeah, so okay. your, your main issue 
is a dust, and your solution for it is to use the the, the tenth. Well, tenth street is concrete right now. Right now, their ninth street is asphalt, and they've been up and down, up and down. There's probably thirty to forty trucks a day in their busy season going back and forth, and they do not water that road. It's, I mean, you could have a guy at least once every hour when there's no moisture content in the air, that road should be watered at least once every two hours. It's watered maybe once at six o'clock in the morning and maybe at the end of the day. During the day, nothing. They have yet to sweep the road once or twice and when they do sweep it, they swept all the crap up into my yard, onto my driveways. It's like, really folks? So it's kind of like, mm -hmm. I understand that they've got to do what they've got to do, but let's be nice neighbors <laughs> and at least kill the dust. Okay, so you're <laughs> alleging that uh, these conditions that we have here will likely not be... They haven't been met at this point. Okay. And if you would contact Arlene Brandt, she will document how many times I have called her and said, would you please call the folks and do something? about it. I've talked to their subcontractors, I've talked to PTS, I've talked to the truckers, Soper and all of them. And they just kind of blow me off. It's like, yeah, well, it's not our problem. You know, we'll call Vinton and see what they say. And, you know, might get a water truck. I will admit Vinton, when they do come in and they do water and when they, their crushing operation is there, they certainly take care of that to a T. It's bringing the material in and getting it out is where they fall short or their subcontractors are the ones that are falling short. So I don't know who in charge, who from your company is in charge of that part. Yeah, well, we will continue okay. the conversation. Yep. Thank you very much, Mr. Ranke. Anybody else wishing to speak to this public hearing? Well, um, we need another statement from the applicant, or do we want to have Public Works or somebody respond to his? Do you have anything to add, Justin? Allegation? I want has anything further. You want to comment on um, on what what Mr. Ranke said that he's he's alleging that these conditions about removing public debris. Um, I do not have firsthand, excuse me, I do not have personal firsthand knowledge of the sweeping activities, putting material into his driveway. If that is occurring, that should not be occurring. Uh, the material should be swept back into the yard and not just dumped into the uh, ditches or curb line. So that is something new to me, so I will have to take that up with the area managers. Okay. What about the dust issue and uh, the alternative of using a tenth? If that's uh, a requirement that the Planning Commission would like us to use, uh, 10th Street or 9th Street, it's... Is that just to your... It, yeah, it should not be a problem. Okay. Um, just a quick, couple quick for you, if you can. Um, so some of the things that he had mentioned as a concern were the... the, the, the dumping and then the loading back as times right now we, we have that it must be watered during crushing and is that in your mind there's nothing that can be done during loading and 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 unloading the addition of water during those processes so what occurs is when the material is brought in from let's say a street project pick any street that that's mm -hmm. up for contract uh, the equipment has gone through it's it's broken it's taken in large large pieces and in, in the dump trucks and hauled to the yard and that's stockpiled and when the pile gets to the an amount that it, it is cost effective for a portable crushing plant to come in, the crushing plant will come in, there'll be a, a backhoe and an end loader, and that will pick up the material, drop into the crusher, and that material uh, during that process is, is watered. So that whole crushing operation, there's water sprays on that. So there's very minimal dust coming out of that operation. The other issues, I would say when that, and, and we see that in some of the areas, we, we do have a couple aggregate quarries that on a sunny day with uh, low humidity, a uh, haul road will dry out. So if you water at six in the morning and at three in the afternoon, the periods in between there, there will be 
I, I'd be ignorant to say there won't be additional dust when you have a, a fully loaded dump truck going through that will bring up dust, uh, which tells me we need to do better job sweeping and a better job uh, with water application to the stockpile material and to the yard itself. So specifically, the, the, the phrase says um, site must be watered during crushing operations and to mitigate dust. Um, adding language related to loading and unloading is not something that you would be opposed to? No. <clears throat> Justin, I think the same probably, maybe we can improve the language in number four as well, relations to keeping the dust down on Ninth Avenue outside of just crushing operations. Right. Sweeping as required. And that's either by the city staff identifying that or um, area managers for Vinton. One issue it sounded like the gentleman, your neighbor, um, he, he felt like maybe he was being run around, wasn't sure who the point person was. And um, is there, is it clear who, if there is an issue that he has uh, or that somebody has, like we call you or they call you or who is there we a particular? We will provide a contact number for the city that they can give to the individuals if they request it. And that contact person will be responsible to you. And because it is a conditional use permit, if we don't meet the conditions, you can yank the permit. Huh. Um, where I think currently there is no permit, we are just there at the nice city of the city. But yes, we would provide a contact. Anything else, Commission? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I believe we closed it to um, other people, right? We brought it back to the applicant. Um, then I will close the public hearing and commission. What's your pleasure? Motion. We need a motion. Did you take care of it or? Okay. Well, mo we'll make the motion and then we'll talk about changing. Motion to uh, adopt the findings and recommendations stated in the staff report. Second. Now, do you have any exact wording in mind or you just want me to work something up? I would prefer you to word something up. <laughs> right, work something up. Um, you want it added to both number three and four? I think so. Anywhere that you had it being watered for just crushing, just simply add it to address the. And and seven to say Jersey fencing. And then seven to say Jersey fencing. Can we get a motion for those changes? Um, yes. Could I ask about, um, Mr. Ranke mentioned 10th, and 10th is an excellent street. Is there any reason why we couldn't ask them to use? I'm gonna, I'm gonna look to our friends from Public Works to see if there's any. There's no reason we can't use 10th Street. Uh, 10th, 10th, or 10th Avenue was reconstructed um, uh, within the last 10 years uh, with concrete pavement. Um, it's going to be easier to, I guess, hold them to cleaning and sweeping because it's going to be easier to sh tell what's actually theirs versus um, East 9th Avenue, which is a less than average asphalt street. Um, <laughs> You know, so we'll easier tell what they're tracking and what they're doing out on tenth if that's the way the commission decides to go. John, <clears throat> would it make sense to stay on ninth if this is only going to be a couple year in six months situation and let that road get beat up instead of beating up a new it, street? And certainly, that that would be my place. that would be my preference is to keep it on ninth. I know that doesn't, you know, you know help the neighbors out at all but you know 10th Avenue was reconstructed 9th Avenue is most likely with some of the sawdust saw district and developments gonna get reconstructed in the near future so if we can kind of keep beating on that for the next few years that would be my preference but 10th Avenue is designed a concrete street for the, the industry that's around there so it, it could take it if it had to isn't there a neighbor on 10th that's it's just moving the issue from one to another well it could be okay thank you well, I raise the question. It's. I don't know if we should. Personally, I don't know if we should move it to tenth. Yeah. Based on that testimony. Yeah. We can do something about the dust on ninth. Mm -hmm. That that would be good. So make a motion to amend the resolution to include language. Three, four, and seven. Rosemary. Three, four, and seven, as discussed. Second. Second. 
Okay. Uh, any discussion on this amendment? All right. Well, I think we should call for a vote on the amendment, and then we'll call for a vote on the main resolution. I've got some more discussion on the, the general one, but the amendment's good. Okay. Then we'll, we'll take a vote on the amendment. Okay. Um, go ahead. Pula Valley? Yes. Erickson? Aye. Vince? Aye. Kiefer? Aye. Perry? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Prop? Aye. Okay. Now we're entertain discussion on the main motion as amended. Justin. So um, getting back to the, the water quality, I do appreciate um, Bill's um, follow-up. I'm, I'm confident that SADOF is doing um, excellent work with environmental protections. N you know, no polluter has ever said, sure, that's what we're doing, we're, we're polluting, and our, our, our product is safe. And so, I mean, there's never been any assessment. It, any, there's no requirements from the city to implement um, water quality protections there. It would be done through the Department of the Natural Resources for, for any type of water quality analysis and envir environmental impact. I, I mean, do we not care? Like, if the DNR says, well, maybe it's important, but we're not going to do it, so don't worry about it, city. And the calendar, I mean, the city doesn't have, generally have any jurisdiction to make those things happen. The Department of Natural Resources, Army Corps of Engineers, are the entities that do have regulations and enforcement options for those things. I wouldn't, it's not that we don't care. Sure, before he goes, uh, just I'm curious if they need to get a DNR permit to be able to store it. Is the DNR even aware of this storage process being, you know, taking I place? I think they would need an air permit, but it's something we can follow up on. Well, I mean, th I think a lot of it has to do, I'm sorry. Are they still here where you, they could answer? Or did it, so, um, Maybe we should hear from Alan while he's uh, One of the issues I see here is that it's always been hard surface, and usually DNR doesn't get involved unless we're actually changing it from a hard surface to a, or a, a green field to a hard surface type of thing. So I'm not even sure DNR actually would regulate that. Uh, and certainly I think we have a threshold. We have to create a, or disturb 20,000 square feet before we even do a drainage review of the property. So, and this predates my time. We were, they were tearing down the Miles Kimball building when I got here and that's where that rubble ended up. And I think it's just been used as that yard ever since actually. And Vinton might've been more recently, but I, I just remember rubble being there ever since I've been here for that's, that's been yeah. 10 years. So, and I don't know what the plan was before that. Uh, if, if anything, uh, the water quality, I, the complaints I've gotten is that water hangs around too long and there's too many big puddles back there and it needs to drain away better rather than a water quality question from the neighborhood. And I think we do require them to protect all the inlets on, on, the, on the site. So that's about as good as I, an answer as I can give you regarding an existing impervious surface that it's not really, it's still an impervious surface. Does the city have um, limits or do they impose any sort of um, requirements outside of fencing, I guess, if I want to store anything outside, regardless of how, if it might pollute the ground or the water? Again, the DNR typically- Does, does the city do any, anything? I can't think of any, it's not a zoning related issue, so we don't regulate it through the, the land use regulations. The time it's come up, in my experience, has been an illicit discharge type of thing where you have a parking lot and something, it rains on a material, salt or whatever, and it starts draining off the property, and then it's an illicit discharge, and I'm not sure who follows up on illicit discharges, actually. That would be something I'd have to ask the Public Works Department or Engineering to comment on. Uh, that's the closest I have for any kind of drainage question yeah, off an impervious it's surface. Not regulated through the zoning ordinance. Sure. Bill, if I could just ask really quick for you, um, the city, it sounds like their position is if there was an environmental issue, the DNR would be the one that's handling it um, and they would do the, the approval process. Is the DNR involved at all in any of this storage? Do they review anything? No, the DNR is not involved. Uh, aggregate material is pretty, pretty, how do I want to say this? Um, Benign. There's really not any type of uh, chemical contaminant that would be found in typical aggregate, even a recycled asphalt. The, you had mentioned air permit, the crushing operation is regulated by the DNR with an air permit, and that is where the requirement is for dust mitigation. It, it comes from is the department. The only time the department would get involved if we'd have a release on a, let's say, a gravel surface over five gallons, 
That requires DNR notification. If it would be on a uh, impervious surface, it would be over 25 gallons. Uh, we still do our full investigation. And then again, it's more of an issue with the equipment than it is with the materials stored. Uh, your equipment is carrying the oils and the diesels yeah. versus a, a rock, which is basically, you know, DLT spec limestone, which is mined anywhere and everywhere around here. Uh, and that's a natural occurring product. So there would be any, in my mind, for an environmental impact, it would be associated with the equipment and not with the material stored. We have spill kits in case there is an issue with uh, our equipment, and then we do our audit and environmental investigation. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Last one that I have. When, when they go or the city goes to develop um, or prepare the unit to the north or the, the property to the north, presumably they will have to do some sort of uh, phase one assessment where they'll do soil borings and determine if there was a potential issue. Let's say that you do that next year and you find an issue and somehow it's related to this. What's, what's the, the recourse then? And it would, I think we'd be working with the DNR. If there was a found contaminate on that site that could directly be linked to the, the crushing operation and storage that took place, then you'd be working through that with the DNR. And that we don't want to include anything in our language that says, you know, we'll, we'll work with the city to address any sort of contamination. Well, the CUP laws in the state of Wisconsin, you can only condition something that is directly related to the land use and the activity of it. And environmentals are typically, have not in the past legally been found to be those, unless it is something directly related to water runoff or something of that nature, where it's, it's physically part of the land use activity. Storage is not a land use activity that has been found to have those, those impacts. Sure. Um, we had looked at some potential other language work through with our legal department of what we were and we're not allowed to do under the current state law and they said we can only condition on the activity and the activity is crushing and storage and getting it into environmentals they were they had said are not legal standing under the current cup law for us so we had to pare it down to just what we had here yeah okay thank you okay um i think we're ready are we <laughs> Any more comments? All right, I'll Question. call the roll. All right, Kulavali? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Ford? Aye. Vince? Aye. Kiefer? Aye. Perry? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Wojtek? Epstein. Pro uh, Prof? Aye. Motion carried, 801. So no planning director's report? Yeah, uh, I need to do it anyways, even though I, I, unfortunately Mr. <laughs> Paul Mary was not able to join us today. Um, Ms. Paul Mary, or Lord, excuse me, Mayor Paul Mary, during the current budget cycle, one of the things they were evaluating was paper usage and, and departments that generate a lot of paper. Uh, Plan Commission, you guys are one of the highest generating paper uh, boards and commissions that he has right behind council. So Mayor Paul Mary got a budget uh, approval for getting Plan Commission tablets and no longer having paper packets mailed or delivered to Plan Commission members. So all of you would be given a tablet, presumably I think they're looking at potentially iPads, that you would get digital packets. And you would no longer get paper, and the city would, would have the cost savings of no longer having to produce the packets, mail the packets, deliver the packets. However, the council did condition it on that. It was a unanimous decision by the board. So I need if anyone is opposed to no longer getting a paper packet, you'd be given a tablet from the city, and that would be the device you would you, you view your documents both at home and in uh, the building when you come here. Is there anyone that is opposed to us doing that? What's Nina going to worry about? <laughs> that they still get them out by Wednesday, <laughs> so you still, guys have enough still time have to week. prepare the packet. I, I do have a <laughs> question, though. Yes. Will we then, seeing as everything's going to be digital, will we be getting color? Will yes. we be, will, so everything will be better quality than what so we get now. So one of the now. things I've told, been, described so, to me, <laughs> that's a big what's going plus. to happen I mean, then? We have this <laughs> blank. I mean, some software on the yep, you're gonna have a tablet, you're gonna but have then a... will she be sending out the agenda and we download it onto our? 
I don't know if they've worked yeah. out specific details. I'm not sure if council gets an actual PDF of the packet or if just the link to get to the materials. Um, no one that's, knows because I was that's so, unfortunately Ms. Po or Mayor Parmelli wasn't here. I don't know if you get a link to it or if you get the actual full PDF. That's something we have to work through yet. I've, I've noticed some of the links aren't like mobile friendly, so I don't know if that would be the yeah. case with a tablet too. I would have to look into that. So you, you have access if you can download on the on the tablet. Yep. Then the, my next question is uh, an application to make it possible to take notes. Most of the tablets should have that right within them. Um, to John's oh, to John's question, yes. So it would no longer be black and white. So a lot of the information you see would be in color. Um, we've been working with staff to, if we go down this route, excuse me, <coughs> actually start adding more imagery, more graphics, that, more those callouts maps. into our packets. Yeah. Because we're everything we're producing is in color. It's then converted to black and light when we have to print it. So you're going to get color photos, color zoning maps. Uh, you know, I think. For example, I think Brian today in his staff board, he had a, a, an image embedded in it. You know, all of that's going to be in color if we go down the digital route instead of them being, um, you know, working with like Stephen, a lot of the design standards variants and stuff we've done in the past. We've hesitated to include a lot of additional pictures in your packet because once they're translated into black and white, they lose a lot of that value. So we've been incorporating more of those things directly into the staff report for you to have once we can have color. I guess like a win -win. I'll go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like no. Of uh, course. It would not prohibit you from printing it yourself. At That's all. true. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. That's true. As long as it's a PDF that arrives, or several PDFs, not just one giant one, but, uh, you know, the agenda, the attachment, you know, things like that, that would easily be downloadable well and it'll still be here right because you'll have copies for people yeah, who we'll come. print a couple of yeah. copies just yeah someone forget their tablets some of the public wants them we're gonna have a couple of copies but instead of you know getting 30 40 of these packets printed we're gonna be able to greatly reduce that number so could one occasionally request a, co a printed copy yeah. it would be in black and white yeah. yeah if you needed one we could handle that but I'm, I'm totally for the tablet. Yeah, the goal is to try to go a little more digital, environmental friendly, a little more sustainable. Kind as long of, as it's user friendly. Yep. I think that's what Lindsay was yeah. referring to. There. Yeah. And I, I mean, it may not work on yeah. various people's other, if you want it on another device. She's talking about purchasing. Yep. Yeah. Those maps. And we These have devices them. would be supplied yeah. to you right. from the city. Yeah. And there'll be some sort of user agreement. You have to sign everything. But yeah, the device will be provided to you for your use at Plan Commission. I think it's a great idea. And if my kids could handle Chromebooks at West, we can <laughs> iPads. Yeah. And I think, you know, plan, plan having this conversation with council and stuff, they're leaning towards iPads because they are a little more intuitive, user friendly than, than some of the other device options out there. So it would be uniform. You cannot like me for so You yeah. can't anyway. ask for a specific. No, <laughs> no, everyone's going to get the same. <laughs> no, I mean, system wise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mac yeah. versus uh, Android. Yeah. My, yeah. my, I mean, I can work out with IT exactly how they're doing it for council. I don't know if it's a, a link or a full PDF provided, but all the documents we provide you are in a PDF format already. Right. That's how they're sent up for printing. So, I mean, usually PDFs are, are universally usable on a, on a Mac, a PC, any, any device. Now, mobile gets a, a little more tricky. So I, don't, I don't see anyone that's opposed to it. I got to follow up with the members that weren't able to make okay. it tonight. Because okay. uh, council did did stipulate it that it's it's kind of an all or nothing. That's a good proposal. Twenty first century. Good. I can be dragged. <laughs> <laughs> Reluctantly, right. perhaps, I but I can be dragged. Uh, anything else? That's, That's it. I'm not even kidding. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. Welcome, Chairman.